that there are 50,000 Bosnians living in St. Louis. More Bosnians here than um, anywhere else in the world outside of Bosnia. And so I really decided that I wanted to reach out to that community and make a piece of art somehow based on these people that have come to our community that I don't really know anything about. And I, in the process of doing the research, I met a young man named Harris Boslik. And he is an amazing, inspiring 18-year-old guy whose father was um, a choreographer in Bosnia. And we really had very little in common in terms of our lives, but dance was our common language. And so we connected immediately. And I was tossing around the idea of doing a whole evening of work based on Bosnia. But as I was thinking about what I wanted to do, this idea of the connection that we made really continued to sort of be on the forefront of my thinking. And so I decided that I wanted to do an evening about how dance connects us to each other and to the world around us and tells stories about things in life that um, in only a way that art and, and dance in particular because it's a, it's a language of movement, something that we all have in common. And so I titled the evening Veza, which means connection in Bosnia, in, in Bosnian. That piece in particular, I, I really, um, my associate artistic director Todd Weeks is creating the work and he and I work together, we've worked together for many, many years and because of our schedules in the last couple of years, we barely see each other and we're, we're great friends, we've had a long relationship and, and our connection at this point is primarily through email, texting, phone calls. And it just has changed the dynamic of our relationship. And so we started exploring the idea, back to the idea of connections. How has technology changed our connection to the world around us and to each other? The dancers and I have had lots of conversations about the piece while I was choreographing it. So they have traveled the journey with me on, you know, from the beginning ideas into this focusing of down to this one point of disconnect. So they have a really good feeling for the piece, which they have to to be able to convey the emotion. But uh, when Alan arrived here with all the different pieces of artwork, we set them all into a separate room. Um, then we had the dancers come out, and I had them just walk around and start looking at things, and Alan encouraged them to touch them, to pick them up, you know. Um, so we spent some time with the dancers just taking time to familiarize themselves with the artwork. And then I told them all, I said, okay, on the mask. I said, I want you all to take really good looks at the, the mask and I want you to pick up something that's you. Something that says something about you, that you feel about yourself. And um, they all went through and would take time and, you know, it was interesting to watch who picked what. What I'd like people to come away with is how can they find the disparate elements in their own lives, um, and and it could be in dance moves, you know, all these components and make something beautiful. Try and make something that people can appreciate to kind of extend the life of uh, inanimate objects is what I do. But how do you extend the life and give you know something a new lease? MADCO has always had a commitment to bringing collaborations to the stage and this is a collaboration between a choreographer, a visual artist, Alan Christian, and a composer, Matt Henry. So the music is being created for the piece as well and, it, and, and the dancers have had a lot of input. So it is a large collaborative effort and I think that always brings interesting work to the stage. It's really about healing after tragedy and what you do to connect with the people around you to help heal yourself after going, 
you know, having this experience. Um, and one of the things I love about the piece is it's not literal. It's not a, you don't know necessarily that it's a piece that was based on 9-11 if you just came to see the work. It has two beautiful pools of water on the stage that very loosely reference the towers, but you wouldn't know that, again, it, you know, if you didn't have experience with the piece. And the, the way the piece is lit, the water reflects, the light reflects onto the water and bounces onto the psyche, and so the dancers are able to touch the water and play in the water, and the water becomes a real source of um, healing and kind of a gentle, you know, like a, a, a gentle place, a calm place, a quiet place for reflection. Manco has been invited to perform at the Sarajevo Winter Festival. And um, in trying to develop this relationship with the Bosnian community, um, when the festival selected the work that they wanted Manco to do, when we are finally able to raise the money to get to Bosnia, the carpet is the piece that they selected. So I wanted to show that piece. And it also has an interesting story behind it. The um, choreographer, when he was a little boy, he has a very vivid memory of the rug that was under their dining room table. And he used to lay on the rug for hours, and the rug had these little figures on it, um, and he would imagine the figures coming up out of the carpet, and and what would happen if they met each other? Would there be a battle? Would they get along? What you know? What would the interaction be? And so when he became a choreographer, he decided to create a piece based on you know his images from childhood.